Station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, the station is ready for the event. CNN, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is CNN. How do you hear me? We've got you loud and clear. Dr. Gupta, how are you? I'm doing great. How, how are you doing up there? It's been a little bit busy the last couple of days, uh, but uh, we were definitely managing some time to work out and uh, and stay healthy. How's everything going on in California? Well, uh, gravity is exerting its effect uh, on us here on, on Earth, and uh, but we're doing well. Can, can you just uh, spend a minute just telling us where where you are right now? Well, you could probably say, see, I was looking around my shoulder here. We have a uh, program called World Map that tells us right where we are. So we're right actually off the coast of California, probably a little far off the coast, about one orbit, so about 15 degrees off the coast. Uh, so it just became sunrise on the International Space Station. We actually have a window right below us, too, but it's doing some scientific observations, so we don't have it open all the time. We have a window around the corner, which uh, is probably lighting up that module over there as the sun was just coming up. Uh, it's just it's absolutely amazing. I think about you every time I look up into the sky. Uh, but I want to start off, uh, Commander, by just congratulating you on doing what we believe is the world's first triathlon in space. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, you know, when we met a little while ago, uh, I was feeling good because I was on the ground uh, practicing, running, biking, swimming, and feeling real good about it. Uh, then after coming up here, your body starts to change, and I was thinking I, was, I might have sec second thoughts about this triathlon thing, but uh, I worked out uh, for a while leading up to it and uh, felt pretty good uh, doing it up here, too. So thank you for the uh, congratulations. Sure, it's absolutely a, a remarkable thing. You obviously saw how you were going to do it uh, using the swim machine and, and and literally using bungee cords, for example, to, to bungee yourself down to the treadmill. And even on the bike, obviously, you have a bike there uh, that you can ride. Uh, your, your time was, uh, you know, I have to say this, in, 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 in all fairness, your time was very fast, I think uh, about uh, 10 minutes faster than mine here on Earth. Did that surprise you at all, how fast you went? Well, uh, you know, I was just trying to get through it. You know, I had um, our astronaut strength and conditioning uh, coaches and uh, trainers have put together a good program on the ARED, the Advanced Resistive Exercise Device, to simulate the swim. And uh, my shoulders and uh, my biceps and my abs and also my legs, of course, were pretty tired after that. And that's, uh, I, was, I was getting a little bit tired getting on the bike, but I knew I'd have to have about an hour bike ride before I could even get on the treadmill. So. Um, I was happy with my time. I, uh, I did a uh, sprint workout, one of our fast running workouts as part of the, uh, the four miles for the run, and I think that made me uh, go a little bit faster at the end. Well, I was definitely thinking about you when I was doing the race. You were wearing the same number that I was wearing, and again, I just think it's the most amazing thing to think that I was, I was doing that on Earth, and you uh, cruising around in the atmosphere, we're, we're doing the same thing. So congratulations again. I do want to ask you about your health overall. One of the things I've been fascinated by is how you maintain uh, sort of your exams up there, doing ultrasounds, for example, of your heart, uh, doing eye scans, for example. Can you just tell me briefly, Commander, how that works? Yeah, you know, it's it's pretty intensive, and uh, luckily enough, we've got a big support crew on the ground that uh, helps us out with some of this stuff, because, you know, when we're up here, not everybody's a doctor. You know, the crew up here right now, there's no doctors on board. You know, we have a, a pilot engineer, and an, uh, two pilots and an engineer, for example. And so this is not our natural expertise, uh, but we're trained on the ground beforehand how to use the ultrasound, and then sort of what we're looking for. And we have remote guiders on the ground that help us 
And so they're able to see through the ultrasound machines, both here when we're doing our cardiac ultrasound, uh, in the Columbus module we're doing our uh, leg muscle ultrasound, and also when we're doing our eye ultrasound. So there's different specialists on the ground and know the specific things that they're looking for when we're using it. Um, but we definitely need their help. Um, it's pretty it's pretty fun. The, uh, the cardiac ultrasound, we do both resting as, as well as while we're on the bike. And uh, so it's pretty interesting uh, to get to know all the different parts and uh, places that you can see your heart from. And so I've become pretty familiar with my own heart doing these ultrasounds. It's, it's, it's a really remarkable. We saw some of that technology. And my, and my understanding is you also freeze both blood and urine samples as well to be analyzed. Um, how does that work and how is everyone doing up there? So that's, yeah, that's an interesting uh, concept. You know, it's, it's a little bit, um, without gravity, some of those things are a little bit more challenging, I might say. Uh, you know, usually the WHC, the bathroom, um, it has a, a pump and a machine that sort of sucks the liquid to the right place. With uh, When we're doing our own urine collections, you're essentially uh, pushing the urine into a urine collection bag with a one-way valve to hopefully not have it come back out, because you, you know how liquid is in, in microgravity. It just sort of balls up all around you. So this is a, a little bit of a, a messy procedure if you don't get it right. Uh, after that, you uh, take samples in a, in a tube, essentially, pulling essentially against vacuum to pull the, the sample in. And then we have... Uh, minus 80 degrees freezers up here so we take samples uh, almost monthly and so we can tell what's what's going on our metabolism for both urine and blood up here it's, 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 a, it's a pretty pretty incredible thing to think about how they come up with these solutions and i know that you had to spend a couple of days uh, helping repair the whc the waste and hygiene compartment uh, so you can turn today's coffee into tomorrow's coffee as somebody put it to us um, how about the food overall? We spent a lot of time talking about the food. Are you getting the types of food you want up there? Yeah, actually, there is a lot of food up here. Um, you know, maybe it's because me and Aki and Yuri are a little bit smaller than the crews beforehand, but I'm finding there's a lot of food and there's a really good selection. Uh, we also have bonus containers, uh, which are provided maybe uh, about six to nine of them per increment per of your specific things that you like. And knowing that we're coming up here and there are some outstanding issues, uh, high sodium, uh, bone density, muscle loss, uh, we get with the new nutritionist before we come and sort of understand what foods are good for you. And so in the bonus containers as well as the other food containers, you can sort of pick out, because we have about a 16-day cycle, you can pick out the foods that you like, first of all, and then second of all, which are nutritious and good for you. Uh, so I've been eating a lot of fish, a lot of nuts, um, as well as doing controlled diets so we can do some comparisons, so we can get some really good data uh, for future explorations. crew uh, coming up as well soon, I believe on October 23rd. Um, I, I'm sure it's very exciting for you. I mean, just psychologically, uh, is, is it tough being up there with the same people for so many days, and how much does it mean to have a new crew coming? Um, it's really exciting to have a new crew coming. I think, but I think every every new event that happens is the next thing to to look at. I mean, uh, um, I think we we plan our days as like one day at a time and looking for the next big event and knowing that there's things that we have to do to lead up to the next big event. Um, we got some we had some pretty interesting things last week with uh, ATV, the European module leaving. This week we're actually letting go some Japanese satellites on the anniversary of uh, the launch of Sputnik. Uh, next, we have a, a SpaceX vehicle coming up, and then we have the next crew coming up. So um, psychologically, it's like, what is the next event that's going to happen? And so we are, we're an increment that has a lot of things like that going on. So it's, uh, I think that's a good approach is just keep looking at the next thing and then plan uh, for the long term, um, just to hang on for the long term as you uh, know all the, all the uh, events that are going to happen during the increment. Well, well th thank you so much. You know, I have to say again, uh, Sunny, uh, since we met, every time I look up into the sky, I, I think about you, and I think about you up there uh, doing, doing all this important work. I must say that I think we should do a triathlon together now at some point. And while it would be easy, certainly, for you to come to Earth, 
and for us to do it together on Earth. I was thinking if you could somehow arrange it that I do it up there with you in the International Space Station, that would be even better. Think you can make that happen? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about it when I get back at the triathlon that we do on Earth, and then we'll see uh, when the next people will be coming up to the space station. I, you know, um, people ask me all the time, what do you think about, uh, you know, when, when will normal people or general people be able to come to space? And, you know, everything that we're doing up here, all the research that we're doing up here is one step closer and closer and closer. So I really do hope that uh, in our lifetime we see a lot of people coming to space. I think I've said it before, everyone needs to take a lap around the planet, it would change your perspective, and it's a beautiful, beautiful place we live. Well, uh, consider me a fan. I'd love to do that sometime, but uh, just good luck. Uh, be safe up there, and hope to see you back soon. Absolutely. Thanks uh, again for calling. Thanks for your interest in the space program. The station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the CNN portion of the event. Please stand by for a voice check from New York Times. Uh, station, this is the New York Times. How do you hear me? We've got you loud, up here, loud and clear up here at the International Space Station. How do you hear us? You're great. So, um, so hi, Sonny. Uh, I was, first question, I was wondering, this is your second trip to space. How does it compare to your first day on ISS, and how has ISS changed? Well, let me answer the second part first. It's changed a lot. Um, I think we've added about seven more modules since I was here last time, and so it's a it's a big house now. Um, there's there were six of us when I first got here, and and now that we're back to three, like I like on my first increment. So the six was a little bit busy. It was pretty interesting and, and neat to have six different personalities up here. So the space station has changed a whole lot. Um, it's really active, insofar as uh, science programs that are going on and things that we're doing inside the spacecraft. When I was up here before, we were really in the middle of construction, and so that was the main goal and purpose, but now we've sort of shifted and we're into utilization, as they call it, and so we're using this laboratory and hopefully coming up with some um, good discoveries and uh, some advancements for the future spacecraft. Could you describe what your typical day is like? I'm laughing a little bit because every day is uh, is different and it's hard to it's hard to tell you a typical day, but in general, um, you know, we get up around six o'clock. We have a, a tag up with all of our control centers around the world, here uh, in Houston and Moscow, uh, in uh, Munich, in Japan, and in Huntsville, which is the head of the payloads, and uh, we just try to have an understanding of the things we're going to do that day. And that might be science experiments. It might be robotics work, getting ready for a vehicle that's coming to join us. It might be getting ready for an EVA. Um, it might be getting ready for an ultrasound. It might be doing uh, some physical fitness activity. Uh, it might be uh, wearing a, a cardio press uh, in support of a, a, you know, another experiment that we're doing. So it's every day is pretty different. And I think that's one of the really cool things about working in this laboratory. Um, you're sort of a, a jack of all trades and, and it's sort of fun. We spent a day working on the toilet the other day and that was not expected. So every day is different and every day is fun. Um, what's your most memorable experience on ISS? Oof. Wow, um, hard to say. Uh, you know, everybody talks about spacewalks because they're just incredible, of course. You know, we've got a cupola that has a great view, but when you're out on a spacewalk and you have your helmet is really the only thing between your eyes and the rest of space, that's that's pretty priceless. Um, we've had a you know, two spacewalks during this increment so far and when we're when we finally got the main bus switching unit, the MBSU, the big electrical box put in, that was pretty um, momentous and so I think that's probably the, the highlight so far. Uh, what was the most un unexpected experience? Was that the toilet? The toilet ranks up there, definitely. Um, uh, Aki and I were talking about it the other day, and uh, we definitely will not take our uh, our toilet for granted anymore. You know, uh, at home, you know, you just go in and use it, and here you get into the habit of just going in and using it. But when it breaks, um, that's that's bad news. You know, we have luckily a backup, which is nice, but uh, it's always good to have your own uh, fixed and ready to go. But really, the most unexpected thing 
um, and it should be expected by now, is every every time you expect something, something changes. You know, we had a little glitch when ATV was supposed to leave, and you know, we all thought that was going to happen, and it didn't happen. And when a, uh, HTV left, it left fairly fast, faster than we had expected. So, I think one of the things we're starting to get used to is mostly things are unexpected up here, and um, and that's what we're trained so thoroughly for. Um, a couple of weeks ago, you became commander of Expedition 33. What exactly does the commander do? So that's a good question. Um, there's three of us now, and there will be six of us. So I, I, I guess you would say you'll, I'll be in charge of three, and then in six. But really, um, I think more importantly was our training on the ground and getting to know our two uh, teams and actually the, the group before us too when Gennady Padalko was the commander our three teams uh, our crewmates getting to know each other and taking a little bit of responsibility to make sure that everybody uh, knows each other's personalities and knows what to expect when we get up here because really when we're up here it's such a small group we're, we're more of a team uh, than a commander and then people who are you know under the commander so um, I feel pretty happy and maybe even a little bit proud that our groups of people up here have got to get, got along so well and work so well together. So I think that's partially uh, the work on the ground. Um, does it change what you do at all? Um, I think I worry a little bit more than I did last time, uh, you know, uh, but, but all in general, not really, because, uh, you know, you get up, like I mentioned, the typical day and you have tasks on your schedule. Um, you, you think about the big picture a little bit about uh, what, what is going, going to happen down the line, making sure, you know, um, uh, everybody's tasks are a little bit equal and nobody's overworked and stuff like that. But in general, it's, uh, it's, it's business as usual. Um, but like I said, I think I worry a little bit more. How do you feel about being the second woman to command ISS? This is Expedition 33, and it seems like for you to be second is still a disparity there. Um, you know, I, I Never really thought about it too much until people start talking about it. Uh, I think it's just a natural progression as there's, you know, probably about 30 percent of the women in the U.S. astronaut office, 30 uh, percent of the astronauts in the U.S. astronaut office are women. So it's, it's good. It's bound to happen. It's going to happen. Um, I hope, you know, Peg did a great job before me. I hope that I do a, a good job that people say, you know, this, that's just, you know, ops normal. That's just business as usual. And uh, nobody even thinks about it. And I think that's uh, the best compliment for, for being one of the first or seconds. Do you see yourself as a role model for women and minorities? I, well, I hope so. Um, you know, uh, uh, the things that I've got to do uh, have been a little bit of luck, a little bit of uh, persistence, uh, a, a little bit being in the right place at the right time. Um, but I think overall, uh, I, I hope that I've become a little bit of a role model and, and women and young girls who never thought they could do this stuff look at me and can relate to me and think, wow, I'm just like her. Then if I want to be a station commander, I can be a station commander. If I want to be an astronaut, if I want to be a jet pilot, I, I can do that. Um, um, so in that regard, uh, I really do hope I am a positive role model. So last time you ran a marathon, and this time you just did a triathlon, is it easier doing in space or in, on the ground? <laughs> you know, everything's a little different. On the ground, things, some things are harder. In space, some things are harder. Uh, when it comes to physical fitness, I think that's, that's exactly the same thing. Um, maybe some, somebody would think it's easier up here um, just because you don't have to fight against gravity. And actually, running hills on Earth are, is, very, is a little bit more painful than running hills on, in space. But uh, the equipment up here is, is tough to get used to. It floats a little bit, so you have to get used to that. Uh, you're wearing a harness or you're clipped in or uh, the, the machine is moving because it's a vibration isolation type of system like our advanced resistive exercise device. And so all that getting used to it, uh, it sort of equals, I think, the uh, difficulty on, on, the, on Earth as it does in space. So both have their challenges. Both are different. Um, and I'm, I'm lucky that I've got to be one of those people that can actually compare the two. What are your career plans after you get back to Earth? 
That's a good question. Uh, I don't know. Well, uh, I think we'll see where the what we're doing at, at NASA. I'm, I'm, it's looking like we're going to have a, a heavy lift rocket that's going to take uh, people to different places besides for the International Space Station uh, beyond. But we'll have the International Space Station as well as our international partners, you know, for the next 10 years or so. Uh, I love this business. It's a lot of fun. I'd like to stay in the space business. Um, but one day when I grow up, I think I would like to teach uh, junior high science. So. We'll see what happens. Uh, I don't know. I'm getting a little bit older, getting a little bit grayer. Got to open the door for the generation behind me, so I'm not really sure what exactly I'm going to do. Uh, thank you for talking with me. Um, I enjoyed it, and goodbye. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, and uh, again, appreciate your interest in the space program and the International Space Station. The station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes the event. Thank you. Thank you, CNN and New York Times Station. We are now resuming operational audio communications.